Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I'm going to provide you one of the most simplest and effective rebuttals against people who have an immediate aversion to emergency preparedness. So let's get to it. And don't forget to click the bell to be notified when a new video is posted. Alright, so this point I'm going to emphasize here today is something that I've talked about in a couple videos before, but it's never been the main focal point of the video, and I figure it deserves its own video because what I'm going to tell you is the bare bones truth in 90% of situations why people have an instant aversion to preparedness. So here it is in a nutshell. In psychology, there's these things called defense mechanisms. Now, a defense mechanism is an abstract psychological construct which prevents a person from having to deal with reality and it's also a coping strategy to deal with information that we otherwise don't want to admit to or would require us to change essentially it's a mechanism to protect the ego but it's much more beyond that it's also to protect a person from emotional suffering now enough with the psycho babble let's get to the real reason why this is a defense mechanism the reason why most people have an instant troll like aversion to emergency preparedness is because they themselves are not prepared and as humanity becomes increasingly more urbanized and people are more reliant on the grid in technology in order to sustain their existence this aversion is going to be more and more because what happens when a person sees a prepper whether they want to admit it or not it's probably happening on an unconscious level for most people they see somebody who could sustain themselves and the only way that they can rationalize their incapacity to take care of themselves is to by calling this person crazy and that's it because they know that were something to happen, they would be at an extreme disadvantage. So the only way that they can go on with their existence is to call this person crazy. Oh, well, why aren't you buying crystal chandeliers and season tickets to the Lakers like the rest of us? Why aren't you spending all of your disposable income on vanity purposes like the rest of us? Why aren't you buying things which are non-functional and non-practical just so you can flaunt the brand name? like the rest of us. And a little addendum here, one I've talked about before also, what's crazy to me is spending immense amounts of money driving through rush hour traffic to find a parking spot at one of these massive stadiums to watch teams of human beings throw a ball around on a field and we ascribe this activity meaning in our minds. To me, that is almost psychotic in a way if you depends on how you define psychotic but perhaps not psychotic but it's certainly delusional because you're convincing yourself that somehow that actually matters yet a person who is concerned about the inevitable collapse i am convinced now more than ever that this current system that we human beings we short-sighted disproportionately intelligent human beings when i say disproportionate i'm talking about the fact that we're very intelligent in some areas but in terms of our social organizational skills our political system our socio-economic system it is completely backward and my friends it absolutely is going to collapse at some point something has to give at some point and i think that perhaps on a very instinctive level Many people understand this and they recognize when they see a person who has food storage, who has the ability to power their home by renewable means, who has a source of drinking water, who knows how to procure food, who knows how to garden, who knows how to take security into their own hands and not rely on the state and other regulatory agencies to ensure the safety of their family and their survival because they themselves by contrast are so heavily dependent on the grid they're like an infant at the teat of big mother i say big mother because big brother probably doesn't have teats but you get what i'm saying here okay this is why there's that knee-jerk reaction and you if you can explain this to people 
in a gentle way. If you can say, look, man, I was once where you were. I was once also conditioned to think that what you're doing right now is absolute insanity. Because as I've said before in my video, The Off-Grid Outsider, the goal is to keep people asleep. Because when people are asleep, it's more conducive to the consumerism that they want. They don't want emergency preparedness consumerism. As much as there is a market around that, it pales in comparison to a person who is willing to devote their life to mindless, conspicuous consumption of non-practical, non-functional vanity purposes. Going out and buying a freeze-drying machine, buying saws, buying things that you can actually use out in the field and that you're only going to have to buy once and that are going to actually save you money in the long run are not things that are compatible with the planned obsolescence model in our disposable society. So I don't share this logical tidbit with you so you can hold it all high and mighty and use it against people and wave it in front of their face and say na 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 na. I'm telling you this so that you can sympathize with why people might have this aversion. It's one part social conditioning and it's another part, hey, I don't got the self-reliance that that guy has. In the back of my mind, why wouldn't you want that? Think about it, why would anybody be so against somebody else being self-reliant if it wasn't the result of some social conditioning or some aversion like I'm talking about here to justify our own way of life? Why would anybody in their right mind poke fun at that or have a problem with that? No matter which end of the political spectrum you're on, there are reasons to be concerned about the viability of the current socioeconomic system in the long term. So I'm going to theorize here that the majority of the resistance to self-reliance is owed mostly to this rudimentary psychological construct. People don't want to face reality and increasingly more so, and I don't blame them. If you just purchased a condo in downtown Manhattan, do you really think you are going to want to give credence to someone who's saying that's probably the worst possible place you could be in a crap hits the fan scenario? You're going to do everything you can to justify and rationalize your position in life because most people don't make decisions about where they live on the basis of things like that. See, the prepper's response to living in a certain place is a response as opposed to just something that happens by accident. You get a job somewhere, so you get a place near that job. That's usually how it goes. Whereas a person who is moving towards self-reliance picks a strategic location that is based on projections of how things might go in the future. I mean, take a look at Detroit. There was one point in Detroit where some of those mansions that you see now that are dilapidated, condemned wastelands, there was a time that that was the pinnacle of American prosperity and success. And it only took an incremental economic shift towards globalization to totally turn that situation on its head. Now, I've been in total agreement in the past that if you want to be prosperous, the city is the place to be. But if you want to be truly self-reliant, you need to make an effort to at least, in the very least, I'm not saying that if you live in an urban environment, it's totally hopeless because you just bought a $1 million condo in downtown Manhattan that you're now paying for for the rest of your life. You can still move towards self-reliance in an urban sense. You can invest in land and property outside of the city. You are not condemned to be that dependent on the grid. And as this way of life, this conspicuous consumption, the materialism, as people start to realize that it's not making them happy, that's when they become more open to the fact. That's where you have this reverse polarity, this uh, reverse psychology happening where people are now moving into tiny homes, the tiny home movement, the RV movement, where people don't want to be bound by giant mansions that they keep filling endlessly with stuff to fill the spiritual void that they feel, to fill the void of disconnection as people drown themselves in alcohol, drugs, 
social media distractions, video games, all manner of addictions. There is a way out. But the way out starts within. And most people, they'll have an immediate aversion to preparedness. They'll come on, they'll troll my channel. And eventually, just because of the fact that they're hanging in there, you know these people who repeatedly will go on emergency preparedness channels, they have no choice but to be slowly and ever so softly opened up to emergency preparedness ideas. And I've seen this happen firsthand, this transformation, this very gradual evolution towards survivalism and prepping. And think about who has the biggest egos of all, the people in the highest positions of society. I just made a video about the elites building bunkers and how that's probably how it's always been, only now they're kind of talking about it in the media. People who are that driven to succeed tend to also really have a high degree of self-regard, self-respect, and interpret that as you will. Some would interpret that as a very light form of sociopathy. I'm not saying every elite is a sociopath or a person who is totally self-invested, but think about it. If you're a person in one of these higher positions and you're seeing all these people in the hills preparing for crap hitting the fan, and you have to be smart enough to know that the current system cannot be sustained, wouldn't you be silently prepping your underground bunker somewhere, buying property somewhere in the world? Anyways, guys, that's what I got for you today. So use that, but use it gently. Don't point it in people's face and kick people while they're down because that's just going to build more resentment towards you and the full spectrum of emergency preparedness. Whether you're just the soft core kind of prepper, like the urban prepper who really tries to cater to the average urban person, or you're the full-blown off-grid homesteading prepper type. It's bad for everybody if you use these argumentative techniques to alienate people and try to make yourself feel more important or more empowered. We all know that at the end of the day, we are more empowered in those situations. So there's no need to flex that muscle and put it in people's faces. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Don't forget, please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Hour.